Hello everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 27. Uh, this tutorial isn't going to be over any code necessarily, it's going to be over some demonstration of how matrix transformations work. So I put together this demo and I'll have a link to the GitHub repo for it. The code in it is a little messy so I, I'm not really suggesting looking at the code, but if we go to debug it, what we have is you'll see we have our texture and we have a grid and we have a camera we can move around. If you hold right click, you can turn the camera and you can hit uh, WASD to move around and you can hit spacebar to go up and Z to go down. Now if you want to uh, turn off one of the axis renderings, for example the XY axis, you could turn that off or the XZ axis, you could turn that off. Now the purpose of this program is to uh, demonstrate how matrices work. Now this is the same texture we were rendering before. So we're going to turn off our X, Y, let's turn off the X, Z axis. So now we're just looking at it on the X, Y uh, plane, which is pretty much how we were looking at it before. Um, so the way that it works is if we want to move an object or rotate an object or scale an object, we will multiply all of the vertices by a matrix in our shader. Now our matrices, they can be multiplied together and that one matrix will contain all of the properties that we need to do. Something else is the order that you do the matrices matters. So let's go over the most basic matrix we can look at. Let's look at the translation matrix. So we're going to add a translation matrix and we have our X, our Y, and our Z component. So we want to move this texture, let's say, to this grid over here. Well, if we uh, move it by one unit, you see we've now got it into this grid over here. So let's say, let's move it, uh, let's move it a few more units. So let's say we've got it, uh, I can double click and type it in, four units to the right. And by the way, I'm doing this UI rendering with something called Dear I'm GUI. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, I didn't actually write the code for the UI because that would have taken a really long time. Now, let's say that we also want to scale this. Well, what we can do is we can add a scaling matrix. And let's say we want to make it wider, right? We'll scale it on the X axis. Well, you'll see that when we start to scale it, the object moves to the right. Now the reason that this happens is because we are also scaling the translation we had done before. So the proper way to do this, if we want to scale this and then move it four units to the right, is we have to scale it first and then translate it. So let's remove the translation all right, now we are back, set this back to one, we are back at the beginning. So if we scale it first, and then we translate it, then what we could do is we could scale it by two, and then we can move it over, let's say, uh, you know, our four units. And now it's just moved over four units. So it's important to understand the order of this. Our scaling matrix is pretty straightforward, as well as our translation. Let's turn that back to zero. So, you know, we can scale by the X, and we can scale by the Y. We can scale by the Z, but we won't really see anything if we scale by the Z, because this is a completely flat object. See, if we go to the back, we just have a back and a front, but there's no width for this object. So next we have the rotation matrix. So the way the rotation matrix works is we have a pitch, a yaw, and a roll. The pitch is rotating about the x-axis, the yaw is about the y-axis, and the roll is about the z-axis. So for example, let's say that we are looking at it from the top and we want to flip it towards us we would uh, modify the pitch since that's about the x-axis. So you see now it's facing towards us. Um, alternatively, we have the yaw to you know, turn it. 
about the y-axis, and then if we want to rotate it, we can use the roll about the z-axis. Now it's important that you apply your rotation and your scaling first. In the order of these, it doesn't matter. Uh, as far as scaling and rotating, it won't, it won't matter as long as these are the first operations you're doing. However, you want to do your translation after these. If you do these after your translation, then these are going to modify by how much you translated. We already saw this with the scale, but let's take a look at this with the uh, rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a translation matrix. We're going to go up five, uh, five units on the y-axis, right? So let's say that we want to rotate this upside down. So we'll add a rotation matrix. And if we want to rotate it upside down, we'd have to uh, rotate it about the z-axis because we want to rotate it around the axis going away from the camera. So we go to modify the roll in the rotation, but instead of going upside down, you see it is actually rotating it uh, around our whole uh, vector that we translated by. So how would we adjust this? If we wanted this upside down and we wanted it at this point, what we would have to do is we would first have to rotate it upside down. So let's just try to type in pi. There we go. It's in radians, the rotation is. So first we turn it upside down and then we'd add our translation matrix and we would move it five units up. So you see, we do the rotation first and then the translation, and we get the desired result. Now, there are times to use the rotation matrix after translation, and I mean, it, it makes perfect sense if you did want some kind of orbiting effect. Let's zoom out a bit more. If you wanted some kind of orbiting effect, you know. But in this example, we weren't going for that. So yeah, I have... Um, I've made this and I'm going to have the source code so that you can pull it up and play with it. Something else that if you're more interested in the actual math of what's going on, uh, you can check this detailed matrix info uh, checkbox and you can see the actual matrix values for each of these. So for the rotation matrix, the translation and the other rotation matrix, and you can see how the values change as you modify it. And you can also see the final matrix. So this matrix, this final one, is all of the other ones multiplied in order from top to bottom. So you can see, okay, well, when I, you know, do the rotation here, okay, that's the difference it makes. And if I do the translation, that's the variables that get changed, and etc. So yeah, that's all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. I just want to do a quick review of how matrices work. And... The next tutorial, we are going to implement a, uh, a matrix for transforming our object. And in the tutorial after that, we will probably get into the actual view and projection matrix, which you need those if you want to set up a camera and move about the world and have proper projection.